26th National Conference on LGBT Equality. Task Force TV. Creating change in Houston, Texas. Hi, we're here with Task Force TV. Here at the National Conference on LGBT Equality, Creating Change. I'm Darlene Nipper and I'm here with my co-host, Tim Pogo. How's it going, Darlene? It's uh, great. We are now in high gear for the conference. This is episode two. And now that things are really up and running, that means some pretty high profile guests on the episode today. That's right, we have the highest profile. We have the star of Orange is the New Black. That is Laverne Cox here today. Absolutely. And you're going to have to wait till a little bit later on in the episode, though, to hear from her. Uh, up first, now that we are in full gear here at Creating Change, you know, there's a whole lot of people it takes to run the National Gay and Lesbian right. Task Force. So why not begin with speaking with the top person? Ray Carey, thanks for taking a moment. I, I know you're probably pulling five million different directions this week, but uh, how's it going so far? And uh, what do you think so far of Creating Change 2014? Well, it has been an extraordinary experience already, and we're not even halfway through. And not quite five million directions, but over 4,000, which is something to be said for our conference. We're so excited. We have people from all over the country. Today's plenary was amazing. And to be able to talk about where we are as a movement, with the people here at the conference was really a powerful experience because we want to do justice to the work that people are doing around the country. What we know about where we are now uh, as a movement and as a, and as a country, we've made a lot of progress. Absolutely, we've made a lot of progress on marriage equality, but we have a long way to go in a lot of ways. You know, you can go, mar go get married, come back to your office, put a picture of that wedding on your desk, and if you have a homophobic uh, super supervisor, you could be fired. So we've got a long way to go. But, but even more than that, what we really try to do is talk about the full breadth of issues that affect us as lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people. It's why here at the conference and to, in today's speech, we talked about reproductive health and justice. We talked about immigration. We talked about racial and economic justice. There are so many issues that are affecting our community that while it is wonderful we are making so much progress on marriage, marriage simply doesn't attend to. So for how many years have you been the executive director and have you found that at each state of the movement address you've had better and better news? Well, absolutely. I've been executive director now for over five years and with a task force for 10 actually. And you know, I look back on some of the early speeches and they were rough. They were rough. We, there are many times we came together as a community and we kind of had to lick our wounds and prop each other up. This year is not one of those years. And in fact, I think if 2013 showed us anything, it was that 2012 was not a fluke. That we have been building this movement for decades and decades. This is not new progress. This is long-term progress. And that's really what social justice change is about. Describe for us what this means to be in your role as executive director and, and, and how that relates to your own personal history of, of, of being an activist and, and working towards the movement. Well, it's an honor to be in this role, I have to say. It is a joy. It is exciting. I get inspired by creating change and when I get to travel around the country and, and work with activists. And it, and it really is part of, of who I am uh, in this movement. I started out as a queer youth activist doing HIV and AIDS work. Uh, I was actually an ACT UP and I was an AIDS lobbyist all at the same time. Uh, and so I think, you know, even my own experience informs how I think we can create change, which is that we need people who are taking brave acts, like asking their school to change a permission slip that says, you know, parent instead of mother or father. Um, but we also need systemic change, uh, where we look at laws and policies that affect our lives. So that very much informs how I serve in this role and how I serve our community. And you're a great example. You started here, now you're the boss. Well, and uh, so what would you say to the people out there, whether they identify as LGBT or not, that want to get involved and they're thinking, gee, uh, what can I do? Well, how can I get involved? Well, here's the first thing. You don't have to move to another state. You don't have to come to Washington to be able to create positive and lasting change. You can really start at home. And I think, you know, one of the messages I've been getting out uh, through our social media, but even in speaking here, is that uh, the other thing, it sounds like a basic message, but you are not alone. Right? And unfortunately, as much progress as we have made, there are a lot of people in our community who may still feel they're the only person in a small town or in their school. So first and foremost, you are not alone, and you can get involved. 
And there are fortunately so many organizations across this country that are working for social change for LGBT people. And sometimes it's not even an LGBT specific organization, although we have amazing organizations in our movement. Sometimes it's the local ACLU or another organization, a reproductive health organization that, that may be uh, partnering with the community. So don't be afraid to reach out and use your voice. That's the other thing. Uh, for people who are of voting age, absolutely vote. It counts. We know that right now in this country, voting rights are being stripped away, and we need everyone who can vote to vote and to get involved and to make a difference. Team effort, right? That's right. That's right. We can do it together. Absolutely. Ray, thanks for taking a minute, and great talking to you. Tim, appreciate thank it. you. Appreciate it. Task Force TV, live from the 26th National Conference on LGBT Equality, creating change in Houston, Texas. And we're back with more here on Task Force TV. That's right, Tim. Next person is really going to be talking with us about people of faith in the LGBT community. And I got to admit, being my first time here at Creating Change, I was definitely one of those people that would have thought, you know, things of religion and the LGBT community just don't really mix, but how wrong I was, Absolutely. as our next guest will explain. This is David Lohman, uh, looking pretty dapper here. I caught you right before tonight's plenary, so looking Thank good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Uh, you know, my first time here at Creating Change, and I, I did notice in the schedule lots of different faith-based sort of activities and seminars. Uh, generally, yeah. give, give us a lowdown on what's going yeah. on. Well, when you look at what the queer community is facing in society, the, the root of so much of the, of the anti-queer bias is religiously based. And we ignore religion at our own peril. We've got to address... Um, the root of uh, of uh, so much of the opposition. So um, we uh, are involved. You know, we're working for a world in which everybody um, is free to participate in the faith community of their choice. You know, in the full uh, breadth of of that faith community. So you know, not only sitting in the pew, but leadership, ordination, whatever it is. That's a good point because the theme here every year is inclusiveness of everybody, and that means even people who are religious. Right, exactly. Right. Um, there's there is one of the things that we are are trying to do is challenge the perception that if you are queer, you are not religious, and if you are religious, you are anti-queer. There really are a lot of misconceptions in that regard. It, very much so. Very much so. Um, the the uh, faith voice. Um, in the pro LGBT movement has just gotten stronger and stronger. Our our faith office is, is based in Minneapolis and we in Minnesota just had a marriage big marriage campaign um, in the last year, year and a half. And it was really remarkable to see progressive voices of faith um, really take the lead in uh, in our side of the um, of the campaign. Um, like it's never happened anywhere else in the country to that extent. So it, yeah, it's 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 an exciting time to be doing the work. And tell me about the Shower Stoles project. Yeah, it's this really cool thing. Um, it's been uh, it started in 1996, and it's a collection of over 1,100 liturgical stoles, the cloth mm -hmm. that uh, pastors wear, um, and. Um, they have been donated to this collection. A lot of the pastors um, have been defrocked because it was either they came out or they were outed. Um, a lot of folks in the collection, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, made the decision because of their denomination's policies, knowing that ordin they would never be ordained, had to give up that dream. Of, of becoming a pastor. Um, there are a lot of people in the collection, lucky folks who are in traditions that now, uh, in which you can, can be ordained now. Um, so it's a, it's a real uh, mix of experiences. Um, the stoles, uh, each one has um, a story um, attached to it uh, for the person you know, for whom that represents. Yeah, it's a Very really, it's a really a powerful, humanizing uh, thing, and we do you know close to 100 exhibits of it a year around the country. It goes to congregations and colleges and seminaries and universities, and it just um, you know, 
uh, humanizes the the issues of ordination and queer exclusion in in a really tangible emotional way yeah david thank you for thanks for taking some time and my keep up the pleasure. great work my pleasure thank you task force tv live from the 26th national conference on lgbt equality creating change in houston texas all right, Darlene, uh, this next guest, our final one for this episode, this is, hold everything, this is the one that everyone's been freaking out, trying to get a glimpse of, that pretty much raised a ruckus here that's, at Creating Change. That's right, a star, an activist, a voice for transgender women, and a leader in our community. Absolutely, she's Laverne Cox, and here she is. Laverne Cox, here at Creating Change 2014. I, I know you're busy here. And you got a big speech to make, so thanks for taking yeah. a minute. Sure, no problem. I'm utterly excited, and I think I'm so excited because there's so many dear friends of mine who are here who are excited to hear me, hear what I have to say, and I'm just excited to be here because I, I, I found when I get to really interact with the community, then that those are the really best times for me. So, yeah. What were your thoughts when you got asked to be here? Honestly, I was like, what could I possibly have to say to a room filled with activists and advocates and folks who are doing the work on the ground on a day-to-day -day basis? What, what could I possibly have to say to them? And then um, several friends of mine said that, that um, to me that I, we all have our work to do in, in the movement and we all have a role to play and that I, I am playing a role. So um, that made me feel a little more confident about it. Absolutely. Well, speaking of your role, uh, let's talk about your TV role. Uh, Sophia in Orange is the New Black. She's wearing an orange shirt, uh, dressed uh, very fitting. Uh, talk about playing that role and what it's meant to you and how it's helped you in the movement and how has your life changed? My life has changed completely and utterly. It's completely <laughs> different. So it's just, it's just wild that um, a role can change your life the way it has. I, I love the character. I, the, the scripts are just incredible and, and Jinji Cohen is a genius and all the actors on the show are incredible. So it's really a dream come true. And, I, and, and really when we were shooting season one, I was just so happy to be working, you know, for any actor to have a job. Yeah, it's a like, really yeah, big woo. deal. It's a really big deal for an actor to have a job. And then as a black trans woman who's also an actor, it's, it always feels really extra special for me to get to just work. And so I really had no expectations that the show would, you know, take off and it was Netflix. And so it was like, okay. I mean, I, it was, wasn't like, it wasn't like I could get my hopes up that it would turn into some cultural phenomenon, but it is indeed turned into a cultural phenomenon. And so going to season two has just been crazy. And I, and I, and I've never had, usually when I act, the acting is my entire focus, but I've been doing a college lecture tour and I've been doing tons of press and I'm, I'm working on a documentary about C.C. McDonald and the epidemic of violence against trans people. People can find out about their documentary at freeccdocumentary.net. Um, we just started a, um, an Indiegogo campaign because we're trying to raise money to continue production for it. So I'm just really busy. <laughs> I, I've never been this busy in my life, so I'm just trying to sort of manage it all. Is, and self-care becomes really paramount, and I'm figuring out how to do that. <laughs> You to yourself, of course, right? Yeah, yeah, I try. I try to do that, and I try to see friends when I can, and and my and, and really rely on my support systems and and the people who love me, and and and, I, and I'm lucky that I have those people in my life. Do you feel that the position that the show has sort of put you in is just giving you an opportunity, um, just a, a bigger voice, maybe to spread the message, help the movement, and uh, you can you'll, you'll use that to, to use your voice as long as it will. As long as it'll roll, right? I'm um, certainly. I, 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 I started doing television about it was six years ago now. It's 2014. Six years ago, I, I did my first television show. And I sort of had a conversation with myself and with my brother at the time about, you know, I've always been a sort of political person. And I've been politicized around my identity. And I was like, should I talk about this? Do people want to hear this stuff? And, I, and my brother said to me, if you're going to have a public platform, you should use it to um, advance something that, that's important. And so I've just been trying to do that. Um, and that, that's why I'm here tonight. And th there's work to be done, isn't there, uh, in terms of trans actors and, and the getting roles and, and, and 
maybe a lack of roles for trans characters? There's work to be done with, in for as, as far as trans everything. And in terms of the media, in terms of the larger LGBTQ community, um, ha, you know, having trans people as voices, you know, really being a part of the conversation in, in the movement, a part of the conversation in, in the industry. Um, what I've been so excited about over the past several years is seeing with the internet particularly how trans folks having their own voice and tell, us telling our own stories is really shaping and changing culture. And it's really just sort of about taking that mainstream, us having sort of control over telling our own stories is really where the, re where the revolution happens in the media and in, in, in the movement. Now I've read, which is always a bad thing to do in interviews when you say, oh, I've read, uh, but you actually don't consider yourself an activist, more of an advocate, is that right? I, you know, historically, I've I found that the word activist can be a little um, off-putting and sort of confrontational, and I, I, I'm rethinking that. You know, a lot of it was a sort of semantic thing so that I could um, be less threatening. It's interesting as a black woman and as a black trans woman trying to sort of have a mainstream career and not being uh, appearing threatening at all. You know, and trying to sort of not scare people. I think that was a lot of you know me me embracing the, the word advocate instead of activist. But but I've sort of come to realize that um, in what I'm calling tonight imperialist, cis-normative, heteronormative, white supremacist, capitalist patriarchy. A black trans woman is, is a threat to that system. <laughs> Just me being, you know, walking down the street is a threat to that system. So, so that's okay. <laughs> Laverne, pleasure to meet you. Good to meet you Have too. a great time in creating change, and uh, we appreciate you taking a minute to talk to us. Thank you, no problem, enjoy. Well, there you go, another episode of Task Force TV. That's right, Darlene, but the conference is only getting going, so we got a lot more to go, but that's good. That is good. Absolutely, so check back with us. We'll have lots more here at Creating Change 2014 on Task Force TV. See you then. See you. Task Force TV, live from the 26th National Conference on LGBT Equality, Creating Change in Houston, Texas.